Look at that sunset. So today is Sunday. We are moving into phase two of reopening Croatia tomorrow, which means that more businesses were open, hair salons, other places where there's a little bit more contact than normal will open up. And then the following week is when we might get to go to the islands. We don't know. Today, however, I'm bringing you guys another video from our time in Morocco. This one is uh, the time we spent at the uh, reservoir. It's a reservoir just outside of Eritrea, which is about two hours north of Merzuga. And Merzuga is the place we went to that has the sand dunes of the Sahara Desert. So this is our, probably by the time we got here, it was about two weeks in to our time in Morocco. So this will put us right around February, at the end of February, very end of February. By this time, places in Europe had already started to experience some outbreaks. I think Italy had, we had just heard that Italy has some pretty severe outbreaks. So at this point, we were pretty aware of what's happening, but we were as far south as we're probably uh, going to be in Morocco and you know being that we were still pretty far away we felt pretty safe but you know a couple weeks from this video is when things takes quite a turn but as you can see here you know still pretty normal this is end of February 2020 in Morocco while camping at a uh, reservoir Good morning, everyone. We're now about two hours away from the city, or I guess the town. I don't know how big the place is, but it's a town called Merzuga in Morocco. And that is like in the southeast corner of Morocco, pretty close to the Algerian border. It's a, kind of a popular place for people to go um, you know, experience the sand dunes, Sahara Desert, and all that stuff. As you can see around us now, it's super barren. This, uh, this kind of reminds you of, uh, like the deserts of Utah, sort of. And this spot, specifically, we're at a, a reservoir. This is a, a dammed up river. Presumably supplies the water for Merzuga and the town's uh, Erechidea, which is right south of us, just like 15 minutes, presumably supplies all the water for there because we are sort of on the south end of the mountains now, the Atlas Mountains. We crossed over the middle Atlas to, uh, which is where the cedar forest was, where we camped with uh, these monkeys. And then, um, yeah, we drove kind of over or slightly through the high atlas and now we're on the south end which as you can tell it's like super dry this water is pretty cold actually i think it's from snow melt from the high atlas whichever water from the high atlas that flows in this direction i don't think most of it flows north as far as i can tell because it's really really green north of here in fact, the cedar forest was the last place where the Barbary macaque monkeys are. That was the last place where we had like really green landscape, trees and vegetation. And here is that. It's pretty, uh, pretty barren. There's, uh, but there is farming going on here. The last few days, we've been here three nights. After we left the cedar forest, we overnighted at one spot in between overnight 
but then the very next day we drove here and we've been here three nights so this is our fourth day it's a pretty good spot actually i mean you know there's other spots that we probably have been to that's better but here in morocco it's like you just want a place where you can be kind of quiet alone secluded and this is about as close as you're gonna find aside from like hidden in the mountains somewhere behind some trees but you know this is fairly convenient there's no facilities obviously of any kind there's not even trash we've got to pack in our trash and pack it all out but here we have uh, a few friends that we met uh, a couple from Germany Alex and Verena and uh, another couple from the island of Guadalupe French islands in the Caribbean and uh, yeah they're uh, they're traveling Antoine and uh, Alizé and a young German guy that showed up two days ago uh, Benedict he travels around he's from Bavaria as well just like Alex but they uh, they actually met in Portugal last year and didn't recognize each other until yeah they got out and we haven't had a place to fill water for the last like four or five days and we're finally getting down to our reserve so we have to leave today to get some more water but it's also getting pretty warm the last couple days we've had highs of like the high 70s and I think the next couple days it's gonna climb up into the 80s and where we are right now is actually gonna be warmer than where we're gonna be later today which is in Merzuga right next to the Sahara Desert sand dunes so it's gonna be pretty uh, pretty intense and it's really dry here several of us have had bloody noses because of the dryness but it should be good we're gonna go down the Merzuga it's a little touristy but I think it'll be worth paying for a campground there because I think there's swimming pool at a couple of them that are highly rated the kids are really excited about that and there's gonna be just camels you know most of them are for kind of touristy purposes people uh, who own camels rent them out for rides and stuff and that's you know good money really interesting thing about Moroccans is uh, they speak French uh, fairly well they start learning French at a relatively early age and it's mandatory they learn it in school and there's been this one Moroccan guy well actually there's lots of Moroccan and sort of most Moroccans are Moroccan Berbers Berbers are the the natives that are part of the Moroccan area so most of Moroccans are uh, Arabic Berber right so they're a combination of both cultures one of the big things that happens when you're wild camping is you get a lot of people approaching you to sell you stuff here a lot of the local Berbers they uh, they come down from their village or wherever their their places are and then they uh, they sell us geodes they find these really cool geodes up in the mountains back there and they, I don't know how they know that's a geode inside maybe just by cracking open thousands of them to find them but from the outside it just looks like a rock and crack it open it's really cool geodes that they find up in the mountains and they come down here to sell them but we can't buy geodes we can't buy rocks from everybody so you know we usually don't buy that kind of stuff but we'd love it if they just come down and sell us like fresh bread or something there's this one Moroccan guy he came here two days ago and just started talking to us he only speaks Arabic and French so difficult to communicate fortunately for us Antoine and Alizé they are uh, they speak French and Antoine speaks fairly good English so he does a lot of translating for us so yeah we were able to glean some really cool information from this Moroccan guy and he's not trying to sell us anything he's just hanging out he just wants to be friends and it's a little awkward because he's he was hanging out by Benedict's camper and Benedict is just a young kid in his 20s camping by himself or living in his van by himself down in Morocco for you know three four weeks and they can't really communicate but he comes down here he walks he says he walks an hour each way to come here to hang out just to hang out there's nothing he's trying to sell he just wants to make friends so you know we're able to ask him like 
yeah, what's the deal with the camels? He's like, well, the camels are, people who own the camels are rich people here because a camel, we uh, learned yesterday, costs something like 2,000 euros to own. So if you have like a dozen camels, you're pretty rich by Moroccan standards. Most people in Morocco live in, you know, the bigger cities like Marrakech or Fez or Casablanca. But here, this uh, it's mostly just Berber and um, people that own tourist operations. A couple days we've had a goat herder walk through here. Each day he's been coming through. He's got about, I don't know, it looks like, feels like 300 goats. And yesterday he came by with a brand new feel like it was just born yesterday or the day before a baby goat so little he puts it down and knows how to stand but it doesn't quite know how to walk yet so he actually came by here holding the goat and he sets it down and just standing there not knowing what to do and we we're able to walk right up to it and he was really cool he says hey you guys want to take a picture of course he spoke French not much English so a lot of sign language, single words. So yeah, he lets us take pictures with a super tiny, soft, furry baby goat. Really cute. And we asked our Moroccan friend too. Goats are, you can buy a goat for about 100 euros. So he has 300 goats and that's, you know, 30,000 euros. I think he's uh, considered a relatively rich person too in this area by Moroccan standards. So, yeah, it's been a good day. Yesterday was uh, Alex's girlfriend, Verena's birthday. So we had a fire last night and made dinner, ate with each other. Our Moroccan friend was here hanging out all day. At the beginning, it was kind of awkward because, you know, everybody's inside their vans. He's just sitting outside by himself. But he comes out here drinking tea. He brought his tea kettle. He made us all tea too yesterday, so. Pretty, pretty amazing experience. Even though this place feels like Lone Rock in Utah or Lake Mead in Nevada, it is otherworldly different when it comes to culture and just the rest of the surroundings. So we've had a good three days here, four days, I guess. We've been here now, I think as of today, two weeks, and we spent the first seven nights paying for campgrounds and then the last seven nights while camping. Both have been good. The first uh, three campsites were spent in cities, which gave us a really good cultural sort of crash course to know what Morocco is really like. And then the last seven days, we've been camping in forests, deserts, side of the road, a little bit of everything. And after Marzuga, I think we'll uh, head up into the high Atlas Mountains. I think it's going to be hot and it's going to be a good reprieve for us to get up in altitude to get away from the heat. I'm thinking it's going to get real hot here real soon. So we got to get up to the mountains and then probably to Marrakesh. And then from there, we'll start making our way to uh, Agadir, which is uh, a city on the Atlantic coast. And looking forward to doing some surfing there. Are we packing? Is it? Me too. Yeah. Like Get her on the internet to download a book. So okay. Well, I'll swivel the seats. I'll organize the front of the van. Oh, you, you did the dead body already. Yeah, I did. Thanks. About an hour away from Rizuga, pulled over to check out this oasis town. I don't know what this is called, but just up there is called Mexi or Mesqui. And clearly, this is an oasis because it is just dry, no rivers anywhere, and then all of a sudden you have this palm forest down there. Lots of green, lots of farming, lots of palm trees and a small population of people. Almost to the Sahara Desert. Okay, let's go back up. You guys ready?
We made it to the Sahara Desert. We're at the town of Mazuga in Morocco, right at the edge of the Sahara Desert. It's a really cool place. We're staying literally right at the edge of the sand dunes right here. And we're doing something really special today. We decided that we're gonna ride camels. 